Today we're going to be taking a photo like this and turning it into something like this. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. For those of you that don't know, my name is Nick Vandervet and I create all different kinds of motorcycle content. I recently ran a poll on my Instagram asking you guys if you'd like me to make a tutorial on how to create better motorcycle photos and to my surprise, I got a lot of positive feedback. So today, I'm gonna to run you through the editing process on how you can create a photo like this. Before we get started, I wanna quickly thank Ducati Westlake for sponsoring today's video by providing me with the Red Ducati 1299 for this shoot. If you're interested on the bikes and services that they offer, I highly encourage you to check out their website, link down below in the description. All right, let's go ahead and get right into it. As you can see here, I have my Panigale 1299 here and I photographed this bike behind a garage door that was white and the reason why I did that is because it allows me to easily remove the bike from the background which is the first step to actually creating this photo. Now in order to remove the bike or any object from a photo we're going to take the selection tool here, it's called the quick selection and that's W for short and all you have to do is click and you can kind of drag it as well to select the parts of the bike that you want. Now this is a bit of a tedious process just because uh, a bike like this has a lot of different spokes and small details and the more details you capture, the more specific you are, the better result you're going to get once you apply a new background and start doing all the color grading and all that good stuff. So make sure that you take your time with this, play some music while you're doing it and just go through and select all of the bike that you want for the actual image. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this process and go to the next spot because I've already already done this. So what you're going to do here, actually let's go back one step. Once the bike has been completely selected, what you're going to do is you're going to click and hit layer via copy. What this is going to do, now I didn't select the entire bike yet, but what you're going to do here is create a new layer and we can label that bike. Now that's just for some organization. Now what we're going to do is drop down to the lower layer here, which is the original layer, and we're going to take the polygonal lasso tool, lasso tool, and that's L for short, but make sure that it's selected for the polygonal because it's a lot easier to use than the lasso tool. What you're going to do is going to left click, and it's going to create a point there you can see, and you're going to drag all the way straight, and all you want is that bottom section of the photo. And we're going to click to the end, drag it all the way down on the bottom, and then reconnect it. Now, the only thing that's selected is the bottom part, and we're gonna right click and create a new layer as well, and we can label that road. All right, so now we've got three different layers, and nothing, you can't really see any difference from the original image, but what we're gonna do now is we will go to the next image. So basically what, I, what you do here is you're gonna find your photo, go to my drive, let's go to Ducati Westlake, it's in the final stills, and here's my background. So what you can do then is you can bring in your background, drag and drop it. This has already been cropped, so that the formatting is a little different. What you're gonna do is it's gonna bring up this transform transformation tool, and you can move the photo wherever you want it to go. And from here, you wanna make sure that the layer, when you first import it, the layer is gonna come on top like that, which is you want to be able to drag it down in between the road and the background because that's where it's going to actually appear behind the bike, which is what you want. All right, so I've already placed the photo, the background where I want it. And so what I did after this is because I want the bike to pop out a little bit more from the background, I created something called a tilt shift blur. Now, in order to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to select the layer here and we're going to go up to filter blur gallery and go to tilt shift. Now there's a couple ways to do this and the reason why I use tilt shift is because I want the blur to gradually go out into the distance because if it's just a, a plain Gaussian blur it's not going to look as natural. So what you can do here is just play around with it and this is going to be your overall blur and what you can do is you can click this and we can move it, click and hold, and we can move it to wherever you want. What it's going to do is, with those little lines here, those dotted lines right here, you can drag that out and that's going to spread out how much blur there's going to be in between this line right here and your blurred line. This section up here is going to be the most blurred. So if you bring this down, 
it's going to blur more here and it's going to be less blurred here and less blurred here. So as you can see, take a look right here. As I pull this down, it's going to start to get a lot more blurry. But if I bring this up, it's going to be a little bit less blurry. So that you play around with this, you can also rotate it. I've already done this, so I don't have to do this. Once you've completely figured out where you want the bike to be, you like the colors and all that stuff, you can go to the next step, which is uh, selecting the bike, and we're gonna use the eraser tool. And make sure that's selected, and that's E for short. And what we're gonna do is when you use a quick selection tool and you bring the background into the new layer, there are gonna be some tiny little fragments of the photo that are not gonna look good. Like for example, right here, I didn't even get this to begin with. So we can use the eraser tool, make sure the bike layer is selected, and we can just erase the original image. Be very careful here because you can't get the, what you erase, you can't get back necessarily. And be a little bit more specific here, reduce the size. Just go in and just slowly clean all this stuff up. Now, like I said, this is a very tedious process, but um, it's up to you how much you really want to do. All right, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to open up Lightroom and we're going to be able to individually change the colors based off of the actual color. So what I want to do is essentially take the reds and kind of blend it with the background so that it looks a little bit kind of like a camouflage look. That's the original image that I was hoping to create. So what we're going to do here is we can save it. I've already saved it as the file here. And make sure it's a PSD file, Photoshop. You'll hit save. What we're going to do is going to open up the file here. Right click, open, go to other, Lightroom, Lightroom, and open. Now what it's gonna do is gonna automatically import the photo that you want, or that you originally selected. It's gonna be selected right here, and you're gonna hit import. And as you can see here, what you can do is go onto your color tab. This is under the HSL, which stands for hue, saturation, and luminance, color, and then your black and white. So we'll go to the color, hit the reds, and from here, you can completely alter just the reds. It's going to change just the reds in the photo, which is awesome in my opinion. And I've already, I've already tuned this to where I want it to be. But as you can see, we can change the saturation and create totally different colors, which is, which is really cool in my opinion. And then luminance, this is also a cool factor. You can make it darker. You can make it lighter. And Lightroom does a great job by neutralizing the brights and the darks and really just focuses on the color. That's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the tutorial, I appreciate it if you guys give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more motorcycle content, I encourage you to follow me on Instagram, at Nick Vanderbilt. I post tons of extra content there that I think you guys would enjoy. Other than that, guys, thank you for tuning in on my first tutorial. See you guys in the next one. Peace.